Hey y'all, it's Alicia, and I have a juicy word for us today. And of all places, it's actually out of the book of Revelation, but, 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 it's from the beginning of Revelation, not the apocalyptic end timey part. But this word has been on my heart lately in a way where it just kind of keeps popping up. So quick context, in the beginning of Revelation, Jesus appears in a vision and he basically gives the seven major churches a progress report. And he tells them what they're doing well, what they aren't doing well, the bad that will happen if they stay in sin and the rewards they'll have if they overcome. And let me tell you, it's very good reading and it's very easy to follow unlike the rest of the book. So in this video, I'm actually not going to unpack those first three chapters in their entirety. Rather, I'm going to tell y'all the things that God keeps calling my attention to because I think there's something he's specifically saying here now. But I do highly suggest that you go back and read or reread those three chapters just so that you can pull off the meat that I won't be getting into. So let's get into this. There are mainly two, or maybe you could say two and a half points. The first is about this idea of elitism that can exist between different denominations. And what I mean is this, it's this idea that like my camp, whatever your camp is, is so much better than every other camp. Like our camp is the only one who has correct theology, the rest of y'all teaching is whack, or our camp is the only one that has power. The presence of God isn't even at y'all's churches. Or our camp is the only one that's living right. The rest of y'all don't know how to be holy. Y'all, like it's tired. And I'm gonna tell you why it's tired. So the tiredness of that is not actually fully based in whether or not those opinions are true. Like maybe y'all are the only ones that got this one specific thing down and maybe y'all not. But either way, the problem is number one, arrogance. I mean, the churches in Revelation didn't get to write their own progress reports, God wrote them. So like if the progress report is coming from you, it's kind of like, who are you? Remember when Miranda Priestley said that in Devil Wears Prada when Andy showed up for her interview? I feel like that's what we need to ask ourselves. Like, who are you to be giving out the progress report? Who are you to say that you know everybody in these camps and denominations and you're so sure that your group is the only one doing XYZ correctly and everybody else is just... Remember she did that, Miranda did that hand movement too when she dismissed her, she was like, that's all. So, you know, who are we to be doing that? You don't know all these people and maybe you can make some general observations, but progress reports aren't general. They are very specific and they are based in omniscience and a deep knowing of what's going on in the hearts of people, not on outside opinions and external perspectives looking in. So there's just a level of let me chill that we need to have when we start getting uppity about our spiritual circles. Because also, while one person may be getting uppity about what they feel their camp does well, they're not also discussing what their camp is failing at that another camp is succeeding in. But let's move on. So everything I just described, that's basically arrogance. And arrogance is yucky and we already know that. But the problem is not just arrogance. There's something so much deeper to this and it's the fact that arrogance is actually blocking a deeper revelation of who God is. So let me break that down. Let's say camp theology is filled with a whole bunch of brainy people who believe their teaching is just pristine and on point and they feel everybody else's teaching has errors and maybe people don't really shout at your church. Maybe you feel like that's silly and you guys have moved on to the task of right teaching. And then let's say there's camp spirit, which is filled with a whole bunch of these kind of up in the clouds to people who just experience the presence of God so strongly and they have all these cool and amazing encounters with God in ways that a lot of everyday people just don't experience regularly. 
you know, if ever. Now, maybe sometimes people critique their teaching or maybe think they lack systematic expository study of the word and they may wonder about your church, like, hey, where are the foundations in the midst of all this, you know, loosey-goosey stuff? Worst case scenario would be these two camps have zero respect for each other. They make exposure videos calling out what's wrong with the other one or they just exist in their own bubble and they only fellowship with their own camp. They only listen to their own sermons. They only worship to their own music. And let me tell you, they miss what the other one does well. See, just because your camp does something well, doesn't mean it does everything well. But that's exactly how a lot of us be acting. And I think we forget that, hey, like just like in Revelation, some churches get certain things really wrong, but those same churches can get something else really right. But when we get caught up unintentionally in the arrogance, we discount and discredit a church that we think misses something, and we don't stop to think, what is it that they did get right? And we definitely don't tend to ask, what is it that they got that we missed? Because a lot of us, don't have the humility it takes to learn from the broken. I just said a whole word, y'all. Yeah. We don't want to learn from the broken. And it's crazy because I'm sorry, but God be using imperfect vessels to teach his perfect ways. And if we don't have enough humility to learn from those vessels, if we get too caught up in the feeling of superiority we get from constantly critiquing them, then guess what? we miss out on a piece of the glory that God reflects through them. And obviously, I'm not saying go out and find somebody who bears bad fruit and just gobble up their teaching, like not at all. You know, let's use wisdom. But I'm saying on a denominational level, these different camps and schools of thought that we have within Christendom, Let's look and see if our neighbor camp has something worth preserving before we just act like they're the bottom of the rung of the kingdom, you know, if we even consider them to be part of the kingdom at all. I think we forget that we're all seeing through a glass darkly. None of us sees perfectly just yet. Nobody sees the full picture just yet. And maybe instead of feeling so above our neighbor, we need the piece of the puzzle that they really got. Maybe this camp really has an anointing in the area of healing. And rather than act like they're the heretics who believe in gifts that are no longer in operation, we need to honor that and really press into it and start going to some of their conferences and getting some of our people healed and laid out. <laughs> you know, maybe this other camp, man, the worship may be a little dry. But boy, the teaching is gonna be rock solid. You will learn the precepts of the faith and you will not be biblically illiterate after you come up out of there. Okay, so maybe maybe this other camp, okay, we don't really want their strictness about certain things. Maybe they kind of got this reputation for lacking in love and being overly judgy about their own pet peeves. But man, they really got something right about reverence and they pack some power like their deliverance ministry is on point. So we need to glean from that. And maybe this other camp, okay, a little soft on the teaching. They don't really teach enough about repentance and they kind of stat, uh, shy away from a lot of the hard issues. But boy, do they know how to love. They really know how to make someone feel welcomed. They might be too soft on certain things, but it's coming from this deep understanding of the value of people and connection and grace. And we can take a page from their book too. And oh my gosh, huge side note. We're not even gonna get into what these examples might look like if we attempted to break these church camps down by race or political preference. But I do recommend go there with the Holy Spirit. So let's sit with that and maybe not all of the people around us have gotten this revelation yet, so we gonna pray for them. But as for us, we are going to repent of that camp elitism mindset and learn to receive the reflection of Christ that exists in our neighbor. Not copying where they missed the mark, 
but also not letting their failures block our acknowledgement and appreciation for their legitimate successes and the opportunities we have to behold God deeper because of them. Okay, I said I was gonna give y'all two and a half points, but now that we're here, it just really feels like an important break and I don't think we should rush, rush past this point without really asking the Holy Spirit, have I dismissed a whole camp because of their sin or because of one of their weaknesses or because I think my camp is so much better at X? And can you help me deal with that so I can receive not the thing about them that might be broken, but the thing that they got right uh, that I'm not even paying attention to? And again, there is wisdom in how to do this and there also were churches that had nothing good about them, so there's that. But I dare say that if you X out every camp but your own, you definitely missed it. So let's reflect and ask God, have I started tripping? Have I over glorified my denomination? Have I acted like we're the only ones getting it right? Like we're the only ones who really love God? And do you need to make me mindful of where I'm missing the mark? Because I would hate to face a harsh judgment because I was so busy glorifying our strengths that I never paid a second thought to our weaknesses. So there's a lot to comb through. Um, so God bless you guys. And I'll see you in part two. It'll be out soon because that part is already fully planned out. So subscribe so you don't miss these uploads. Jesus loves you. See you next time.